then every single paper one for CXC, multiple choice paper, there I repeat every subject. Some subjects more than some. So in CSEC maths, there are questions that my father do, that I do, that my children will do, the children, children gonna do, we in the future. And I'm gonna still be doing these same questions. So we're gonna do the most popular styles of questions in a whole series of videos coming up here. So stay tuned. TikTok, Reels, anywhere you're watching this, stay tuned. Let me get this done and prep up for the exam. And see if you can do it too. So this is the question. We have a rectangle whose area is 53.6 cm squared and they say they multiply the length by four and the width is halved. And now they want to know the new area. And you see this already. Do you know the answer? Do you know that a lot of people get it wrong? Let's check it out. Original rectangle. Multiply its, its length by four. So now we have four times the area as well, but half the width. So how much area of the original rectangle do we have? That's a half of the original and another half make one and another half and another half. We have two times the area of the original rectangle, which was 53.6. So the new area is, so what are you doing? Press follow, press follow, subscribe. Stay connected. We're gonna go through all the popular questions. Another one of the most popular ever repeated CXC style question formats. Can you do it? Here we have a Venn diagram above. The shaded area represents. We want to know what the shaded area means. The answer is one of these. To do this question, you just need to understand what these little tiny dashes mean. These dashes mean out of. Well, in maths we call it complement, but it's like out of if this circle is a and inside this circle is timing and i say you are a complement that means you out are timing so look at the diagram right now everything that's shaded is out of p p complement so the answer is this very popular sets question learn it this question could come in two different ways we in the popular maths question series thing here that we're doing, right? So let's stay focused. This, these videos that I'm doing now, all or close to all will show up in your exam. So um, John has X marbles and Max has twice as many. Max gives John five of his marbles. How many marbles does Max have? Sometimes they'll ask you how much Max have, sometimes they'll ask you if John have. They might change Max's name to Joel or something, but you know, same concept between me and you. So what's the answer? Max has twice as many as John, so Max has 2x. So we know it's none of these because we're dealing with Max and Max has 2x. And he was what? Max gives John five of his marbles. So Max lost five. Some form of this Pythagorean triple question must come. Just memorize this. Three, four, five triangle. Three, four, five triangle. There are other types of triangles, but you see that three, four, five triangle. Is that pop watch, watch your question. Watch your question. So we have the wall, we have the ladder, we have these three meters. What are we trying to find? How far up the wall does the ladder reach? But by the way, the ladder is five meters, so we could put in a little five by the ladder. That's the hypotenuse. So if this is five and this is three and this is a right angle triangle, you just supposed to automatically know. Now this is four. I mean, you could use Pythagoras theorem to figure it out. You know, Pythagoras theorem says the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides. So c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. But three squared is nine, four squared is sixteen, nine and sixteen is twenty-five. The square root of twenty-five is five. And you're just supposed to know that three, four, five triangle and spot it one time. So the wall, how far up the wall is go? As simple as a. So if you're in memorizing that three, four, five triangle, you're playing with a mark in your exam that's going to come. Check me out for the more popular questions in the next video. Wow, while well, you watch this question here, see if you can do this question. It's a very popular question where um, A, B, and C, they are parallel. Which of the following best describes the relationship between X and Y? Oh wait, this is called a free max. This is, a, this is called free max, ladies and gentlemen. So pick your answer now. Nah. Why is you picking your answer? Let me teach you something that will just earn your one star max in CXC, right? I'm teaching you this in like one minute. This is a parallel line. Well, a pair of parallel lines. If I draw a line across like that, that's called a transversal. And what it does is it creates two situations that are identical. Meaning this angle here is equal to that angle there. We actually call them corresponding angles. 
the green angle that I just drew is also equal to this kind of green, this special green here. So this is actually equal to that. We call it alternate. Or if I put it here, it's still equal. So if this was 60 degrees, everything in green here is also 60 degrees. This angle to this angle is called vertically opposite. This angle to this angle corresponding. This angle to this angle, alternate angles. And there's a little more like these similarly will be equal to each other. All the angles that I put in red here. If they were, if this was 60, if this was 60, this would be 120. So everything in red here would be 120. So this angle is you know, vertically opposite. The same rules apply, but there's a little relationship between these two. We call them co-interior angles, and they always add up to 180 degrees, 120 plus 60. Or angles in a straight line would add up to one, one. Did I say 160? 180 degrees, 180 degrees. Now you know. And what was the answer for this question? Of course, x is going to be equal to y because they are alternate angles. Nice it, Max Collect in the exam. We're doing the most popular questions. We go back and check all the other videos and make sure you memorize these because chances are close to all, if not all of these, will show up in your exam. Love and blessings. Simple question. Can you answer this? Even if you're not doing CX right now, do you remember how to do this? It's, it uses the laws of indices. And I'll just jump straight to this. This is going to be the shortest video in the most common CSEC math questions style that we are um, doing, right? So 3x squared multiplied by 2x cubed. The 3 and the 2 will multiply by each other. They are just the integers, the coefficients. Um, so 3 by 2 is 6. Hey, now phone ringing in the background. But pay attention, pay attention. x squared by x cubed. Well, they don't multiply the 2 by the 3 there. When you're multiplying powers like that, and they have the same common base, that's a ruling in this is you add the powers. You remember that rule? So it's really 2 plus 3 is 5. So who looking like the answer there, boy? Not you, not you. How oh, you reach 72? Is that way? How do you reach 72? Anyhow, forget that. That's the wild answer. This is the correct answer. You got that? If you get that, pick up yourself. Only you press like on the video. And I think I have a few more of the most common CSEC maths questions here. You know? uh, the themes of the questions that you should be looking out for. Actually, I just have one more. Catch me in the next video. So these are the questions that you want to learn. Love and blessings. A dress which costs 100 and hey, stop and try this question earlier. It just the dress costs 180 dollars has been sold at a discount of 10 percent. The amount of the discount, I don't know, but we, we just went through like the seven most popular CSEC math questions, and I don't find any of them are particularly tricky. I don't how what do you think they are actually pretty easy, right? You, you get the answer for this one already, right? Most of y'all look good in percentage, you can see the answer for this one. We basically want to find what 10 percent of 180. We have a number 180 and we want to find 10 percent of it. Of mean multiply 10 percent mean 10 over 100. But I mean, we don't even need to do that. We know this is 110, so you're just shifting back the point. Bang, seen it, right? Congratulations, or oh, we can probably do this. So, here we are. What next all you want to see on TikTok? You all want to see some more some more of these multiple choice questions prep for the paper one or you want me to start off topical revision? What topic is the most miserable topic for you in CXC? It was nice. Love and lessons.